If you look at the um, GeoBuddy at the large scale, the point that Mitch Harris is making and the point I'd like to make is that the connectivity of the SendBuddy and their overall distribution varies around the Bahamas. And that again is a function of the paleotopography and the hydrodynamism of each of the particular location you're looking at. So there can be quite a lot of complexity if you look into the details of how these sands are being distributed and they don't form necessarily just nice broad band of you know, sand sheets. But by and large, if you look at the, the, the broad trends, the facies model that I've showed you at the beginning um, is respected. And that brings me to the reef itself. So again, the reef is really where the wave crashed. And I like this uh, footage because it really brings home that message. You can see on the left, we have the windward side of an island. The waves come and crash on the reef. And on the right, you see almost no wave energy because the wave has been broken by this reef. And here's a beautiful example of a barrier reef. This is Belize. So you can see we have the barrier reef here that protects the back reef. So the back reef is where the lagoon is. But I, the one thing I want to point out is that you can have reefs or corals in the back reef. Those would be known as isolated reefs and they can still form because it's shallow water condition if there's not too much sediment supply and the, the water conditions are not too turbid, they can grow pretty well. And, and in Belize, we have evidence for rhombo rhomboid reefs in the back. And of course, the reef is you know, what everybody wants to go see when they dive. And you know, I'm no exception. When I went diving in Bali, I took full advantage of looking at the reef and, and enjoying those, uh, those uh, moments because it's a very important eco ecologic niche. Just like the mangrove is an important ecologic niche, the reef is a very important ecologic niche. So you see a lot of fish, you see a lot of uh, biodiversity in the reef. Unfortunately, it's one of the most biodiverse niche on the planet, even more than rainforest, or at least equal to rainforest, but it's also one of the most threatened in the modern world. So really, we need to protect our reefs. Now, um, the reef, of course, is where we have all the bound stone, but I think um, often when we look at steep-sided geometry platform, we neglect to look at what goes beyond the platform itself. So let's look at the slope and the basin. And recently there's been a, an increase in interest in trying to understand this as a depositional environment, and in particular to look at turbidite deposit known as calci turbidite. So turbidites made of calcium carbonate sediments because the Bahamas produces a lot of sediments or any isolated platform produces a lot of sediments, but there's not that much accommodation on top of a, a flat platform like this. So a lot of that sediment eventually is exported through that very steep sided geometry. You can see in this bathymetric image that the, the side of those platforms is extremely steep. And so you can export a lot of sediment straight into the deep basin known as the, the Blake Basin here through a mass transport deposit system. So some work has been done here on the, uh, the Little Bahamas Bank by Recouvreur et al. in 2020. And they've mapped actually the different types of uh, facies that you can find on the slope and the escarpment, the escarpment being the steepest part of the system, and of course, the basin. I'll spare you the details, but the, the few things I want to point out is that there's a lot of hard ground being deposited. Notice also the presence of deeply cut canyons, and these canyons are absolutely vital to understand where the sediments are being transported. I should mention that those calci turbidites are known to be potential reservoirs because they can have pretty good reservoir quality, so have a good porosity, good permeability. So that's why there is so much interest in them. And it's interesting to see how the sediments are basically transported from the Little Bahamas Bank over the edge where the reef is, so those are the blue arrows, down towards the um, Little Bahamas shelf, 
and then into the canyon and eventually straight into the Blake Basin. And we have different types of uh, sand belts and tidal bar belts that we can observe there depending on the influence of the waves or the tidal influence. So that brings me to a summary of what we've seen in this class. First, I think it's important really to insist that the reef in this type of you know, setting is an effective barrier to the energy of the waves. Now, also, we've looked at these facies belt and that, that predictive model. This model works. We do have facies belts, but it's very patchy as well inside those belts. So there's more complexity perhaps than what we want to acknowledge at first. We also saw that sand, not just the reef, but sand form an, imp an important part of this system. In the Bahamas, we have lots of weeds uh, and skeletal sand, and these can form important um, reservoirs. The transition from the shelf to the basin is very abrupt or typically very abrupt in this type of setting because we have an escarpment. So sediment are transported from one environment of deposition to the other environment of deposition by mass transport deposits, turbidite or mass transport complex. And these can also form important reservoirs. Okay, enough about rimmed platform. In the next class, we'll talk about REMS and we'll do the same thing. We'll look at the typical facies model and we'll look at modern example to see if there's more complexity than we previously might have known.